Okay, so we're going to start uh, talking about these progressive presidents. Um, these are three progressive presidents, Theodore Roosevelt and Taft are both Republicans, and Woodrow Wilson was a Democrat. So one of the things that tells us is that uh, progressives kind of spanned across political parties, right? They're both Republicans and Democrats that were, that were progressives. And this kind of progressive era for presidents begins when Theodore Roosevelt takes over as president after McKinley is assassinated. Okay, so Theodore Roosevelt becomes president, and he becomes kind of the youngest president. And he's kind of, um, you know, this young, energetic guy who came from New York. He was a former governor of New York. Um, he was kind of well known uh, for some of his exploits during the Spanish American War. And he has this, kind of this big personality. And he was um, a progressive in some ways, and other ways he was not, right? So when it comes to uh, business, regulation of business, he wanted to regulate trusts, not necessarily get rid of trusts. He wasn't entirely opposed to monopolies or trusts, right? He believed there were good and bad trusts. What he means by that is like, you know, a bad trust is one where the consumers are losing out, where they're fixing prices and they're kind of doing things unfairly. But good trusts sometimes could result in lower prices for consumers. So he wanted to be a little more nuanced, a little bit more um, careful about how you regulate trusts. But he did establish kind of the Department of Commerce and the Department of Labor. And most famously, he uh, initiated a lawsuit uh, through the Justice Department where he broke up a railroad monopoly, the Northern Securities Railroad. This is highly publicized. It was a use of the Sherman Antitrust Act to kind of break up this railroad monopoly uh, that existed in the Northwest part of the United States. So this is kind of where he built his reputation as what they call a trust buster. Um, he also, because for the first time, we start to see uh, the government siding with workers. We have the United Mine Workers who had gone on strike, um, and the United Mine Workers worked in mines, you know, silver, gold, that sort of thing. And when the uh, dispute, he tried to have arbitration or negotiation between the workers and the owners of the mines, and when that didn't work, he actually threatened to use the military against the owners. Think about how this contrasts with things like the Pullman strike and the Homestead strike where the military was used against the workers, right? So this was kind of a different sort of thing, right? So he was a, he was the first president to really kind of side with labor in any kind of way. He talked about this idea of a square deal, basically being kind of fair to both sides here. He was also president when we were uh, starting to regulate things for public safety. So the Pure Food and Drug Act was basically, you know, we have, we have the Food and Drug Administration today, which kind of makes sure that medicines and food are all kind of like, you know, uh, there's nothing harmful in them, you know. And so this Pure Food and Drug Act was kind of regulating the food and drug industry to make sure that, you know, with medicine, for example, people weren't making false claims or putting like toxic things in there that were poisoning people or whatever. So it's about public safety. Then we have the Meat Inspection Act. And this is probably pretty famous because it was came about as a result of a book called The Jungle written by a muckraker, which really exposed the terrible conditions in the meatpacking industry. And the Meat Inspection Act meant that the federal government, the United States Department of Agriculture, was inspecting meat to make sure that it was in uh, it was safe to eat. So if you, if if you go to the grocery store today and you buy ground beef, for example, it'll have a mark a sticker or a stamp on it saying USDA inspected. That's a result of the Meat Inspection Act. And Theodore Roosevelt was also known as kind of this, kind of our first kind of sort of environmental president. He was involved in the kind of conservation and preservation movement. So those are two different types of environmentalism. Um, conservation was basically managing resources, you know, allowing like, you know, some forests to be cut down, but being careful and strategic about it. Whereas preservation was about doing less to the environment, leaving it alone so that it could, uh, nature's beauty could be enjoyed by people. So Theodore Roosevelt was kind of more on the conservation end of things, but he wasn't entirely unsympathetic to preservation. The preservation people were kind of led by John Muir. Uh, you know, he was uh, an environmentalist uh, associated with like, Yosemite and those kinds of places. Um, Theodore Roosevelt also established a National Forest Service, and he added a lot of land to national parks because he really was a huge fan of the outdoors. He believed that being outside was kind of manly and, and a, good, a good thing to, to, to do. So he was kind of this environmental uh, president.
Now, when he uh, left office, um, he had picked his successor. He basically told Republicans, like, hey, I want you to choose William H. Taft as my successor. And, you know, there's this idea that Roosevelt believed that Taft would continue what Roosevelt called his policies, right? So he handpicked um, uh, Taft. But Taft kind of disappointed Roosevelt, and that's going to result in a split between the two of them the later on. But Taft was maybe a little bit less of an obvious reformer. Like, he didn't get the publicity that Roosevelt got uh, with Northern Securities and that sort of thing. But he was actually a more prolific trust buster. I think he uh, went after 73 different trusts, whereas Roosevelt went after much less than that. Uh, but Taft never kind of got the publicity for it. Um, he did create kind of the Children's Bureau, which is about looking after the wealth that the federal government was looking after the welfare of children, you know, talking about like child labor or conditions uh, in people's homes, that sort of thing. Um, he also investigated kind of U.S. Steel, which was like the big, biggest uh, steel company in the country. Um, and, um, you know, for the antitrust violations. Now, he also kind of angered a lot of progressives with um, this ballinger pinchot dispute here, where uh, Taft was kind of siding with conservatives. Uh, this is, has to do with um, national park land, where um, there was... This uh, Pinchot was the head of the National Forest Service, who was more of a more of a preservationist, and Ballinger was the uh, secretary was the secretary of the Interior, um, and he uh, you know Ballinger was giving land to companies to use those resources, and Taft ended up kind of siding with with Ballinger here, and that angered a lot of progressives. So um, in 1912, when um, uh, Taft was running for re-election, you know, Teddy Roosevelt kind of said, like, you know what, Taft didn't really follow my policies, so I'm going to try and uh, get the Republican nomination. So it was actually Roosevelt versus Taft. Um, Taft was ended up renominated by Republicans over Teddy Roosevelt, and Teddy Roosevelt ended up splitting from the Republican Party and creating his own party called the Bull Moose Party in the 1912 election. And this is one of the reasons why Wilson is a, uh, wins, because Republican vote kind of gets split between Republicans and the, and the Bull Moose Progressive Party. All right, so let's talk about Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson was a Democrat, and he was arguably maybe the most progressive of these three in terms of kind of doing the most obvious things that progressives wanted. So he lowered tariffs to promote competition which was something progressive wanted. They wanted to let more competition in business to uh, dilute the power of monopolies and trusts. He uh, was president when the 16th Amendment was passed, which is an income tax. And so this kind of became the main source of government revenue instead of tariffs, right? So the kind of, and the tax was on the wealthiest people. So that, again, that's a progressive idea. Um, he established the Federal Reserve Act with Congress, which is basically uh, makes the banking system much more stable and you end up with less uh, kind of like panics and depressions and that sort of thing kind of makes the economy a little bit more stable. It makes the banks able to kind of uh, the banking system more regulated. And then maybe most importantly, the Federal Trade Commission, which is a government agency that would actually, if two companies wanted to merge together, for example, they would have to go to the Federal Trade Commission and they would have to pre-approve it, right? Um, and so to avoid any kind of like uh, trust or monopoly issues. They also investigated what was called unfair trade practices. So this is basically an anti-monopoly uh, government organization. And in general, w Wilson kind of was a proponent, a supporter of increased government regulation of business, right? He was anti-child labor, he gave, got federal money for farmers, right? So what we're seeing here under Wilson's presidency is an increased role of government in terms of passing rules and regulations for businesses and for, for society. Now, there are some things that are kind of contradictory here. Um, let's over a little bit here. So a couple of contradictory characteristics. So like if these are progressives that are about more government regulation, the contradictory characteristics would be ones where uh, kind of business were allowed to kind of do the things that they, they wanted to do. So the National Reclamation Act, right, this is constructing dams and stuff in areas that, you know, were kind of maybe environmentally sensitive. So this is under Teddy Roosevelt's administration. So business, businesses still had access to, uh, uh, you know, resources like that. You have the Hetch Hetchy Valley, which is up by uh, Northern, Cal Northern California. There was a dam that was created, this created this reservoir for water for San Francisco. So basically there was a, a fight between 
environmentalists who wanted to preserve the Hetch Hetchy Valley and the residents of San Francisco that wanted water for the city. And so they chose uh, eventually the over a, after a big fight, the uh, reservoir kind of went out and the valley was kind of filled in. Um, Taft also replaced kind of a conservationist with a developer as a secretary of the interior. So again, he's siding with developers and business over kind of the environmental movement. Okay, so there were some contradictory characteristics. It wasn't completely progressive, but as we can see in this time period, like there's a lot of progressive things happening. And this kind of progressive era ends, you can argue in 1920 with the election of Warren G. Harding. He's gonna be the first of three Republican laissez-faire presidents of the 1920s.